this is a big washroom there's also a, a vanity unit as well with a mirror uh, just to keep all your toothbrushes and teeth paste Welcome back to A Bus and Beyond and in today's video we are here at Dolphin Motorhomes here on the south coast to check out this Renaissance by Dormobile. Let's go and have a look. Right we're starting at the front you can see that this is based on a Peugeot Boxer style van. As long term viewers will know I always wear the same colour as the vans that I'm filming uh, and like again I'm doing exactly that. This is fitted with a 2.2 litre HDI diesel engine fitted to a six speed manual gearbox. It's a 2022 model van, so it's pretty much brand new. It's just got 200 miles on the clock. Um, but what do you think to the color? It's like a champagne color, hoodie color. On the driver's side, you can see the van is fitted with 16 inch uh, five spoke alloy wheels. You can see the decals. You've got gray decals on the sides. Uh, tinted windows all the way round. You've also got an inlet for your refillable gas on board and you can see the outlet for the freshwater and wastewater tank. It's got a 70 litre freshwater tank and a 66 litre wastewater tank on board. This is the opening for the cassette toilet. Nice to see that it has been colour coded. That's not always always the case on vans like this but it has been colour coded and you also have the inlet for your water supply. Moving further back, you've got another window, which will uh, you'll see why when we get inside. And then you can see the outlet. It's got a Truma boiler that heats the hot water uh, and heating inside. Uh, two big windows on the back. Uh, also, two big opening doors. You can see at the top, there's also a reversing camera as well. On the passenger side, again, you've got a window at the back here. 240 volt hookup inlet goes there. Nice to actually see that even that has been color coded as well. So that is rarely done. So nice to see that. And then also keeping it on theme with the color coding at the top, you've got a full length wind out awning, which is also color coded in the champagne color. You've got the access to the actual habitation area on this side via this big sliding door. And there's also a um, electrically operated wind out step at the bottom there as well. And just before we go inside, just quick mention that Dormobile make all sorts of vans. So this is obviously a Peugeot based van. They do four berth, two berth Peugeot based vans. This is the four berth. They also do VW based uh, vans. They also do four transit based vans and they even make some pop top roofs as well. So there's all sorts in there, but let's go and have a look inside. Right, we've just come inside because it is freezing and wet and miserable out there. It's nice to be inside. On days like this, I really like to look through magazines and look at inspiration for places to go and visit. And we are really pleased that Really are working with us on today's video. Really is an app that we've been using loads throughout the past few years. Now what Really is, is a, an app that combines thousands of different magazines from tons of different genres all in one app. It has loads of great features. One of the big things that I love is the fact that it's eco-friendly because you have thousands of magazines all in digital form rather than paper form. So it's really good for the environment. And at the moment, if you go into the link in the description below, you get two months free 
and you can cancel at any time. Another great feature about Readly is the fact that you can bookmark sections of magazines that uh, you really like the look of. For example, we've got Campervan magazine here. We've got a feature on North Norfolk and it just looks stunning in there. You know, there's another feature all about um, camping next to the sea. And yeah, it just gives it, you, that inspiration for places to go and visit. Another magazine that we really like is Coast and that features 25 best British beach breaks. That's a bit of a tongue twister, but yeah, there's nothing better than taking the camper van up to the beach and spending the day there or even longer. So we really like that. Another great feature about Readly is the fact that you've got offline uh, capability. So you can save the magazine to your device and um, read the magazine when you're away at the campsite, which often doesn't have great signal. Often the best campsites don't have great signal because they're in the middle of nowhere. So don't forget, if you go into the description below, you can click that link and you'll get two months for free and you can cancel at any time. So if you imagine the thousands of magazines, uh, I, and I read tons of different genres. I enjoy cars, I enjoy music, I enjoy looking at property, camping stuff. If you imagine, if I took all those magazines away with me in a camper van, you'd soon run out of payload. So it's great to have all those magazines in such a small space just on, on your phone or on your iPad. So thank you very much to Readly for working with us on today's video. And don't forget, if you go into the link in the description below, you get two months for free and you can cancel at any time. Right, let me show you around the inside of the Renaissance. Right, so let's have a look at the cab area. Obviously, traditional Peugeot interior. These are the same as the Citroëns as well. Uh, you've got manual gearbox, stereo controls up at the top there, air conditioning below, and these have actually got cup holders. We once drove uh, one of the Citroën-based vehicles and it didn't actually have any cup holders. I think they all do now, but uh, that was a bit of a shock to the system in this day and age. One thing that I really like, you've got the built-in blinds, so, they go nice and flush when you're not using them and then just pull across and meet in the middle. So that's good. Uh, you also have them in the door here as well. So they're really nice actually. If you're wild camping and you don't want to use an external screen because you may need to go outside and get that if you were having to leave the area uh, in the middle of the night, that, that's nice that you can just close them and depart without going outside. Now, where your rear view mirror usually is, we've actually got a screen here for a rear view camera and you've got two captain's chairs. So the driver's seat does swivel, it's in the driving position at the minute. Lever upholstery, which is done by Dormobile. Not massively sold on the color to be honest because it's like a mushroom color and I hate mushrooms. So it just makes me think of them. Um, yeah, not sold on that. But obviously you can pick a different color if you, like me, are not a fan of the fungi. Strangely enough though, it's only got one armrest on both the seats. So, yeah, you, I thought they usually had two armrests, but no, nope, just single armrest. Yeah, it's fine. Pl plenty uh, of space and it's nice and comfortable as well. So as we move back from the cab, it's worth mentioning above the cab, you've got a bit of storage up there, uh, maybe for bedding or coats or whatever. As we get behind the driver's seat, you've got a removable table that also has like a, an extension bit. So it makes it quite a big table actually. And what that does is that spins round and either makes an extended table or you could then move it a little bit closer to uh, the passenger seat, which is obviously a little bit away from this main table. So it just means that everyone can eat together. <clears throat> There's just a catch on the bottom that allows you to spin that and then it locks in place. You can remove it uh, and store it away if you want extra space, like especially when traveling, that would give a bit more room maybe to move. The seat is pretty big actually. You've got enough space. There, are, Most of them in these dinette setups like this, most of them are pretty upright and this is the same, you know, they're, they're quite upright seats, but well finished despite being in fungi mushroom color. <laughs> got a bit of a thing about that, haven't I? But yeah, it's um, it's nice and nice and comfy. And both these seats do have seat belts as well in the middle there. So they are travel seats. Uh, so next to that, we've got a window, uh, which does fully open as well. And you've got a blackout blind or fly screen in there as well. Uh, so they are good in the summer. And then above the table, the dining area, you've got two good sized cupboards as well. 
I should also mention just by the sliding door on the way in you've got um, a few buttons there. One of them is to extend the retractable step from outside then you've got two light switches one of which does that. Ta -da! Opposite the dinette area in the sliding door you've got another big opening window again with blind and fly screen. Now this is mentioned quite often when we look at windows like this and I don't think there's anything you can really do about it because it's just the way they're put in but I agree with some of the comments that you see where I'd actually like to see these the other way around. If you had the blind at the top so it came down, if the sun is low you might not want to fully close the, the blind uh, but it might just block some of that sunlight from coming in so that might be that would be quite nice if it was the other way around but I think they come as a full unit these windows so there's actually nothing you can do about it. Above the sliding door you've got the main control panel for all your electrics so you can turn your awning light on, you can turn the water pump on, um, check your leisure battery health and all that kind of stuff so that's where that is and then we get to the kitchen so let's have a look at the kitchen. So on the passenger side of the van you've got the kitchen and it's a good sized kitchen actually it's pretty big you have an extender on this side which just you know, pops out like that so that gives even more work to the space uh, you've got a socket uh, tower which gives you three sockets and a couple of USB ports on there as well and when you're not using them it's quite nice that that gets tucked away and out of the way you've got your sort of standard uh, sink with burner hob. This is a three burner hob and also has electric ignition as well. So that's nice. Uh, hot and cold water, as you'd expect in a van uh, of this size. But then you've got, yeah, your cupboards. So you've got a drawer that pulls out, which I suspect would be pretty good for cutlery. Um, it is worth mentioning, actually, this is really quite narrow, this gap here. Now, obviously, I'm not the skinniest person in the world, but that is rather tight. <laughs> so that's something worth mentioning. Uh, yeah, so that's for your cutlery, I would, I would suggest. Then you've also got, in this one, a microwave, which is nice. I suspect you'll only be able to use that on mains hookup, but that's fine. Another couple of drawers further down, and they're all a good size as well. This is a false blanking plate because of the, um, uh, the unit above. But then you've got a big cupboard, which has a couple of shelves in. And moving further back from that, you've got the fridge, which is a decent sized fridge. It's a Dometic fridge. And then an absolutely huge drawer underneath the, uh, the hob. Just above the sink and hob, you've also got a shelf, which has uh, a space to put your TV. Uh, so yeah, I suppose it suggests that you put your TV there because it has got the actual antenna socket. But um, yeah, I suppose that works quite well if you're sat there watching TV. Opposite the kitchen you've got this, which we shall explain later. It's a set of skis, it's not really. Also opposite the kitchen you've got the washroom. So it's got a shower curtain in just to protect um, everything inside from getting wet. You've got a Fetford cassette toilet. Above the toilet you've also got a drop down sink, which has got hot and cold water and also a shower opposite so it's actually a pretty big room to be honest even with a cassette toilet in there this is a big washroom there's also a vanity unit as well with a mirror uh, just to keep all your toothbrushes and teeth paste right as we work our way back from the washroom the light switch for the washroom is just on the outside there and then you've got a couple of cupboards opposite each other this one on this side has hanging space uh, yeah, plenty of space so you can hang your clothes up in there and beneath it, it has two rather large drawers actually, pretty big. Exactly the same opposite, another couple of drawers, decent size for your clothes and then on this side, this cupboard has three shelves. The top one has got some electronics in there so there's a little bit shallower but the other two are huge. Moving right to the back of the van, we end up in the rear lounge. So you've got two sofas opposite each other, uh, again with the same leather upholstery. Uh, I'm actually sat on a bit of a slope here, so I'm kind of sliding down. <laughs> It'd probably be a bit easier if I sat this side. Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot easier. 
Uh, you've got the controls on this side for your heating, also more light switches, and then on both sides you've got a little reading light which is just touch sensitive. It has like a couple of lights in it. It's got a little small light at first, which is probably a bit of a night light, and then an actual reading light. Windows all round, so opening windows on there. In fact, they're all opening windows and they've all got the same blackout blinds and fly screens in all of those. So if you're sat reversed up next to a coastal area or um, and yeah, any nice scenery, you can sit here in the evening and look out at beautiful British weather. Right, so this is actually a four berth van. So the first bed is made up from these two sofas. So first of all, we've got to pull this out, which I'm probably in the way of. So the big question is, can I fit in this? So let's take my shoes off and see how we get on. That's big enough, definitely. That's definitely a double bed. My feet are touching the end, but... And just for reference, I'm about five foot 11. Don't know what that is in centimeters. 320, <laughs> I don't know. But let's have a look at the other two bunks. And we have not been shown how to build this. So this should be entertaining. So that's what this is that was stored at the front here. Take that out and then uh, Got to unpack it. We had to ask, we failed, we had to ask. So we need to make the top bed up first. We need to get access to some of these bits. It says it's got written on it, like right hand outer, right hand, right hand inner. But I don't know which right it is. <laughs> That's the only problem. But right, now we've worked out where one of them goes. So it says right hand outer, so it's the outer part of the bed on the right hand side of the van. Once you've worked out where one of them goes, it should be fairly easy with the next ones. This is just called right hand inner. Should also mention that this whole bunk has a weight limit of 100 kilos so um, for, if you're looking at two people sleeping on this then it's obviously two kids or two very small adults right that is on and then you've got these safety nets just to stop kids falling out that goes on like that and that one goes on not so and then the same at the front as well. There's also um, a couple of bits to attach a ladder as well, so you can also attach your ladder, which is underneath the uh, sofa. So yeah, once you've got that made up, then you need to do the bottom bed. There you have it. Two bunks. Right, I think obviously because we've never done that before, it looks fairly cumbersome from our point of view. Um, if you have been doing it a few times, you know what you're doing. I think it's actually not a bad idea to, to get an extra couple of bunks in a van of this size. One thing I would like to see is the actual wooden boards that you put down. I'd like to see them uh, a little less sharp. They're quite sharp on the edges, which is a bit scary. When you're sort of swinging them around in a van, you don't want to smack the sides and smack the furniture because you can't it's not easy to repair this furniture so i like to see that sort of um maybe routed down a bit so it's a bit smoother but um uh, and also i'd quite like to see these metal bars that go across i'd like to see them 
it'd be good if they could be stored somewhere else rather than in the middle there they're a bit in the way where they are opposite the kitchen so but once it's up i think for a family of four you know two adults and two relatively small kids i think that's not actually a, a bad setup now as with all these rear lounge style vans you don't have a big garage that you do with a fixed bed uh, van so as you see the bed is still made up you can see what it's like there um, you've got that's where your batteries are held there is a little bit of storage in there but remember the boards for the bed also go in there you also have the winder for the wind out awning <laughs> that grows <laughs> when you take it out <laughs> And then on this side, uh, it's just your boiler and stuff. So again, not much story. You're shaking. You can't can't film like that. <laughs> Get it together, woman. <laughs> and then in this side, you've got your boiler. And then ahead of that, you've got quite a lot of pipe work and stuff. So there isn't a huge amount of space for bedding. You've just got to bear that in mind. Uh, if you want to store your bedding, you're probably looking at using one of these cupboards, uh, maybe the shelf one on that side. So it's just worth remembering that or maybe you could use the the bit over the cab that might not be a bad place to put all your bedding during the day when you're not using it so there we have it there's a good look at the renaissance by dormobile this one is currently on the market at dolphin motorhomes for just under 62,000 pounds so if you're interested make sure you have a look at the link in the description below check out dolphin motorhomes and come and inquire they also have uh, another dormobile in white which also looks really nice so there we have it but let us know in the comments below what you think. Do you think it's a viable option for four people? Does that work for you? Thank you very much for watching. Please like, and if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out, and we shall see you in the next video. Cheers.